Today on Ten Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Yuan Morland, who's the Regional Vice President for Asia Pacific at Mendix. Mendix is a low-code platform used by businesses to develop mobile and web apps at scale. And Yuan joins us today to discuss how these offerings work and what benefit they have in the development process. Thanks for joining us today, Yuan, and welcome to the Jam. Thank you. Yeah, took a good day, Mitchell. Good being here. Thank you for your time in advance. Awesome. Yeah, no, thank you for um, joining us. So just to kind of start off with, can you give us a little bit of a brief history of Mendix and its presence on the APAC market? Yeah, absolutely. So Mendix was founded in 2005 in the Netherlands by Roald Dirk and Dirk Jan out of a pure frustration that delivering software is extremely hard and fails more often than it succeeds. So um, our platform was founded in the belief that software development could only be significantly improved if there, if there was a paradigm shift. So historically, we have a, a very strong footprint in Europe and North America. But after the acquisition by Siemens, we expanded rapidly in the Asia Pacific region, including China, Japan, Korea, and of course, also Australia. So we established our presence here in Australia in late 2020 with a small local team and have been expanding ever since. So we currently have an install base of around 20 plus uh, companies here from various industries, including banking, financial services, insurance, uh, one of the biggest energy companies here, public sector, uh, logistics, and everyone in Australia, of course, knows uh, Cooper's Brewery, which is also a customer of Mendix. Um, good to mention is that one of our key pillars here of our go-to-market strategy is the ecosystem development. So we are investing heavily in our partners. Uh, currently, we are closely, uh, closely working with Deloitte, Accenture, Capgemini, and an ever-growing list of channel partners. And we also team up with universities to invest in new talent. So for example, the University of Queensland uh, provides a curriculum with Mendix that exposes over 500 students each semester to build and design their applications uh, with the Mendix platform. Awesome. And um, we talk a little bit about um, low-code application, obviously. Um, what is low-code application development and where does Mendix stand out in this field? Yeah, so, so perhaps a good starting point here is to outline the challenges that a lot of organizations are facing here. So according to Gardner, the global demand for new application development is expected to grow five times faster than the capacity and ability for IT teams to deliver on this. So this problem is even more acute here in Australia, where for every eight software engineers needed, only one is graduating every year. And we see that traditional application development is too slow to respond to those ongoing business needs, right? Backlogs are increasing and businesses uh, getting stuck here. So uh, on top of that, there's all kinds of new technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT, that are adding additional complexities uh, to the businesses. So this became actually vividly apparent during the COVID crisis, right? The companies that had a strong digitalization strategy actually flourished, whereas those companies that treated IT merely as a cost center, they experienced a lot of challenges. So digitalization was not really a matter of just competitive differentiation here. In a lot of cases, it was a matter of uh, survival. So clearly a lot of companies are facing a perfect storm here and need to fundamentally change the way they deliver customer software. And local technology can be an answer to that. So, yeah. oh, sorry, do you wanna ask? No, no, so, absolutely, no. I, I didn't yeah, so, so low code in its very essence is a visual way to define and express what Shover should do using a visual drag and drop approach to develop these applications. And it opens the door to a much bigger uh, developer pool that build those applications then faster. But it is important to know that not all low code platforms are created equal. A lot of uh, techno uh, existing technologies are introducing low code merely as an add on feature to their offering. And the moment you step out of that low code and you resort to high code again, you don't have the flexibility anymore. So. What we bring to the table as Mendix is an all-in-one low-code platform for the enterprise that covers the complete application lifecycle, all the way from ideation to requirements management to application development and the automated deployment uh, and integrated testing and monitoring capabilities. And if you then hone into this low-code development capability specifically, you see that Mendix is the only platform out there in the market that covers the complete developer spectrum, all the way from citizen developers to hardcore developers, allowing them to build all the components of a business solution in our single platform, all the way from uh, progressive web apps, front-end capabilities, native mobile, even augmented reality, uh, complex logic, data modeling, integration, and the one-click deployment to any, any cloud, uh, really. And maybe lastly, good to mention as well, is that perhaps most critical for our regulated customers, 
is that we're highly secure. So Menix is, for example, FedRAMP certified, which means we can work with the most critical players in, for example, the US and the UK defense industries, uh, for example, BA systems as a customer of ours. Well, oh, fantastic. And just drilling down a little bit more into that, um, what are some of the most common use cases for low-code app development and how can enterprises rapidly deliver apps um, with the existing talent through Mendix's platform? Yeah, yeah. So Mendix creates a great user experience, being a custom layer where, uh, where organizations can tie it all together. So we build on top of core data, adding in those new technologies like IoT, AI, and machine learning, and then bringing this to the user on any kind of device. So on a very high level, we see that we can distinguish actually four typical use cases. The innovative experiences, uh, the customer engagement apps, the operational efficiency use cases, and modernizations of your core system. So if you think about innovation, it's also all about building fast and failing fast, or ideally being successful fast, right? It's all about rapidly launching new business models. And a good example here um, that I like to use is the face code application that Zurich built, one of the biggest insurance companies in the world. So Basically, you take a selfie, and based on your selfie, they estimate your age. And based on your age, you immediately get a life insurance offer on your mobile phone that you can directly close on your business. And they build it in two weeks. And after launching, it became an overnight hit, right? So effectively, it became one of their more successful customer engagement applications, which is all about delivering exceptional user experience to your users on any of your devices. So other examples here, what you can think about, maybe a bit more modern, but but equally, like, you know, important is mobile banking applications, right? So, for example, Albaraca Bank in South Africa or the Rabo Bank uh, in Europe, who's also active in, in Australia, by the way, they built their mobile banking applications on Mendix, serving over 500,000 users on a daily basis uh, using those apps. Um, when we talk about operational efficiency, it's all about automating internal processes and workflow to deliver on cost savings and maybe improve some, you know, of your, your, your customer satisfaction. And... If you look at the last use case, uh, the modernization or the extension of your core systems, it's all about keeping the core clean or extending the life cycle, the lifetime of your investment. So uh, a, a very typical of, uh, example here is, is in this case, Continental, which is one of the biggest car OEM suppliers in the world. Um, they have their SAP ERP. And for all the good reasons, they want to keep that plain vanilla, right? So they build all the extensions, customizations, and any process that differentiates them uh, on top of SAP uh, using Mendix. Um, so talking about the, the second part of your question, uh, Mitchell, um, I, I, I think it's all about the successful adoption of Mendix in your organization, right? So because it can be quite daunting to adopt a new technology like Mendix. So over the last 10 years, we learned a lot from our customers. And the challenges with adopting a new technology is typically not so much related to technology itself, right? It's much more related to the organizational challenges that come along with it. So to ensure a successful uh, adoption in your organization, we developed a framework called the Trias framework. It's a maturity framework. It's all about starting small, structuring for growth, and then scaling it in your enterprise. And, backed, and that's backed by our 4P model, which is all about the portfolio, the apps that you're building, and the time that you want to build it in, the people, what is your team composition, and how do I transition my existing talent to Mendix, for example? Uh, process, the process, how do I adapt, adopt uh, typically agile development uh, processes in my organization and the platform itself? How does it fit in my architecture? How do you think about reusability and integration, et cetera? So with this holistic approach, we make the adoption and the transition of existing talent to our low-code platform in your organization much more digestible. We increase the velocity of it. And perhaps most importantly, we significantly reduce the risk of adopting a new technology in your organization. Oh, fantastic. Seems like a great win-win uh, for everybody there, and especially totally. in the Australian market uh, coming yeah. up. Um, so on that note, how do you get in touch with uh, Mendix? Yeah, there's uh, various ways to get in touch with us, right? So the easiest way is probably to our website, using our contact uh, us form, uh, or using the phone number that is uh, listed there to talk to us directly. Um, of course, everyone is on LinkedIn these days, so you can reach out to me or any of our team members over there. Um, we organize events and webinars uh, you can sign up for. Uh, we have monthly webinars, uh, local breakfast meet and greets that are planned in Sydney and in Melbourne. And of course, uh, we will also be attending the Gardner IT Symposium in the Gold Coast in September. So you can drop by our booth uh, if you find yourself 
uh, around there. Uh, so please do not hesitate to reach out to us uh, to learn more about uh, low code in general. Uh, and Mendixin specifically, of course, we are very passionate people uh, about our mission and we love to work with you to support you in your digitalization journey. So um, thanks a lot for your time today, Mitchell. Um, back to you. No, thank you so much um, again for joining us, Jont, and uh, we look forward to hearing more from Mendix uh, in the future and uh, seeing you guys out there. Awesome. Yeah. See you soon.